What's happening, everybody? All right, so throttle body testing. Went out, picked up a Fastman 95 millimeter through ported stock throttle body. Pretty cool unit. I've had good success with the Fastman throttle bodies in the past with naturally aspirated combinations. Wanted to see if that success would translate over into the Hellcat platform. And so let's dive into this a little bit. And I might get a little bit techy along the way. You might start getting bored with this, but I'm trying to give you guys as much data as I possibly can. Let you guys know some of the background on the testing procedure here. So first and foremost, no, we didn't do any dyno testing. We took the car to the drag strip every time for this testing. So first things first, density altitude was floating around 2,500 feet. That is important here. I wanted to pick roughly 2,500 foot density altitudes because it kind of puts the condition, if you will, right in the middle. I didn't want to test at zero altitude because that nobody really has access to that. Very few do anyway. And obviously I can't get to 5,000 foot DA, but 2,500 density altitude kind of fits it right in the middle. So if you live in Denver, really nice day, it's gonna be 5,000 feet roughly. Uh, that puts the oxygen content, so to speak, the available air, if you will, uh, right in the middle. So that's why I did that. Um, my car, stock Hellcat in terms of pulley ratio, it does have a tune, but it's really mild. It's running on 93 octane with no boosting, no race gas mix or anything like that. Car has a 309 gear. And in 2,500 foot density altitude, the car with the stock throttle body is a very predictable 10.5 something car. Uh, humidity will play a little bit with that number, but for the most part, uh, it's gonna be a 10.5 X, okay? And the car always runs that number. So when I initially put the throttle body on the car, uh, I didn't really know what to expect. I had dyno tested this thing before. It had shown some gains, but again, those gains really don't matter until you get the car to the drag strip. And I'll, spoiler alert here, I'll get to the, the end first. Uh, did the throttle body do well on a stock car? Not at all. In fact, uh, the throttle body didn't do as well as the stock throttle body. In other words, the 95 millimeter did not do as well as the stock throttle body on a stock car. Let me walk you through kind of the, the data here. So I'm looking at my computer down here and this is what I'll be looking. This is all HP Tuner software that I'm using to data log the car. Uh, this was the last night that I actually tested the car, but I want you to know that I gave the car 11 different back and forth passes to try to collect as much data as I could. I tried to get the car to be identical uh, in terms of run to run to run to run in terms of engine coolant temperature, oil temperature, trans temperature, uh, density altitude, the night that I'm gonna be looking at here, uh, there was less than like 40 feet density altitude difference from one run to the next run on these two passes. So let's walk through this. So uh, cylinder air, this is measuring by the way at 5,998 RPM, uh, basically just pulling 6,000 RPM in fifth gear. Nice heavy load, not full peak horsepower, not full peak torque, just as those two numbers are starting to, uh, you know, kind of converge. Horsepower, or torque's dropping, horsepower's raising. But it's a, it's a relatable number and you can kind of get an idea from what I'm talking about. So cylinder air mass with the 95 millimeter, uh, 1.3814. Um, uh, air charge with a stock throttle body, 1.3752. The data there would suggest that um, that the that you had more air coming into the car with the larger throttle body. Oddly enough, the total airflow though, uh, 4408 uh, pounds per hour versus 4262 uh, with the 95 millimeters. So. Again, there's some refresh rate going on here. This is another kind of thing that'll want to make you tear your hair out. The, the refresh rate or the, or the data capture rate can kind of throw these off a little bit. In essence, what I want to get to is that those numbers in this case um, didn't translate to a car going faster with the 95 millimeter throttle body. As a matter of fact, 
the 60 foot with the 95 millimeter throttle body was consistently slower than with the stock throttle body. By how much? It was consistently three hundredths of a second slower, give or take. If the car was going to, with a stock throttle body, run a 1.52 60 foot, uh, then it was almost guaranteed that with the 95 millimeter, you would see like a 1.55 or a 1.56 60 foot. And that was consistent on every day or night, I should say, that I ran the car. And again, I gave this thing 11 different opportunities on three different days. It went so far as to go to a track rental. Uh, it cost me about $250 to get in on the track rental. And I had two other track days that cost me 30 bucks. So I'm into this thing $310 just in track fees trying to get this data. And believe me when I tell you, I wanted to see uh, not including the cost of the throttle body. And believe me when I tell you, I wanted to see a positive result with this because after all that money spent, you want to have a positive result. It just really wasn't there. Even though the data would suggest that the car was making more power or it was taking in more air, again, total airflow would suggest otherwise. I, I wouldn't really bet the house on that being totally accurate, but they're all within kind of a, a range and that range is basically that it was making the same power. Here's something else too. If the car was making more horsepower, as tight as I kept these data uh, logging sessions, in other words, as close in time as these passes were, and as tight as the numbers were, you would have expected a higher mile an hour through the eighth mile and a higher mile an hour, especially on the big end of the track. And that didn't happen either. Mile per hour with the stock throttle body was constantly roughly half or three quarters or in some cases even more of a mile an hour faster. And yes, my car being a 2015, I did do a throttle relearn every time I put the throttle body on the car. And I was extremely diligent with making sure, again, and I want to make sure this is out there, that those temperatures were as close as I could possibly get them. In the two runs that we're comparing here, um, actually the hotter of the two passes would have been the uh, the, the stock throttle body. So uh, 181 degrees going down the track as opposed to uh, 190 degrees with the stock throttle body. So again, uh, a little bit frustrating um, to say the least, but, um, you know, I can't really, I, I can't really fault the, the car or I can't really fault the throttle body. Throttle body worked great. I mean, it, it was, it, no flaws, no weird things, uh, other than a slight, barely noticeable surge down low. Um, that was really the only thing that I could tell, uh, the difference with, with that car. Um, let me do something real quick here. Also want to give you guys a little bit more data. Bear with me just a second. So used to doing the live show, by the way. <laughs> so uh, for you guys that are going to ask what the manifold air temp was, uh, at the top of this pass, uh, stock throttle body was at 144 degrees. Uh, the 95 millimeter was at 142 degrees. That's how close I was keeping these, these temperatures. So anyway, it didn't work for my car. And that was a real drag. I was really hoping to see some kind of a result. I was especially hoping to see some mile an hour result with this car. It just didn't happen. So... <clears throat> Fast forward, actually, this was uh, within the same week. Uh, we took that throttle body and we were able to test it on my buddy Nathan's car. It is a red eye, 275 upper with a leg maker cold air. Now, he was running the stock 92 millimeter throttle body. We, stopped, we swapped throttle bodies and ran it on his car. Now, keep this in mind. His car has a supercharger that is roughly 10% larger than mine. It's a 2.7 versus a 2.4. Um, 
not only is it a larger supercharger, but it is being overdriven significantly stronger than mine. You know, a 275 upper versus the stock upper with my car. So if that throttle body had any chance of being some type of a, giving some type of a gain in power, it would have been with that red eye. And sure enough, we did see an improvement. However slight it may have been, we did see an improvement. Uh, best mile an hour before the throttle body for the night was about 140, 100, uh, kind of a high 140. Uh, the car ended up going a best of 142 with that aftermarket 95 millimeter fast man throttle body. Um, ET was largely unaffected. It's a high nine second car. Car is very heavy, by the way. Um, but it was running, in essence, high nines at roughly 142 miles an hour at this point. Um, and it shaved off yeah, about, based on what I could tell, about half a tenth. Uh, some consistency with the track prep and consistencies with the runs, notwithstanding, uh, the throttle body did show a gain there. Now, would <laughs> would that throttle body have shown a gain on a stock red eye? Uh, maybe, but it would have been, uh, I would say, less than <laughs> the, the same results that we got. So, bottom line is, if you're thinking about putting a throttle body on your stock Hellcat, a 95 millimeter isn't going to show any gain whatsoever. And if you're thinking about going with a 105 or something like that, <sighs> All I can say is best of luck to you. I saw zero gain with a 95, and if that supercharger were stressed at all to be able to draw in air, you would have seen something pick up there. Uh, for anybody that would say, well, if you'd have tried it in lower DAs, it would have picked up more. The fluid density is the same. In other words, the air density for both throttle bodies would have been the same. The results would have probably been the same. If not, they could have even diverged a little bit further. Uh, but I am confident in saying that if you have a pulleyed car, especially a double pulleyed car, that's where a larger throttle body is certainly going to do you some good. Now, what about if you decided to port the snout and go with, you know, a, the, the 105 uh, for your pulleyed car? Uh, that may show some gains, but I want to warn you before you go out and spend the money and do all of that, you know, open it up and buying the throttle bodies and everything else. <clears throat> A pulleyed red eye only picked up the equivalent of, say, maybe a mile an hour with that 95 millimeter throttle body. And it would have, you would have thought, if it were really choking that blower down, that, that supercharger combination, supercharger pulley combination, would have really benefited from the 95. And what we saw is it just really didn't benefit all that much. You didn't see a huge gain at the track. However, Anecdotally, in other words, the subjective as opposed to the objective uh, results for that red eye was that it was snappier. It had better, better throttle response with the 95 millimeter throttle body with no ill effects anywhere other than picking up a slight amount of horsepower, uh, obviously because it was picking up a slight amount of mile an hour at the back half of the track. So if for no other reason testing it in that condition uh, or, or testing it in the conditions that we did, you at least saw some type of a subjective gain where the car was a little bit spunkier to drive around. So, also, I wanted to bring up, I did test it with my car with the stock air box and the stock filter. I did not test it with any other cold air setup or anything like that. Uh, the reason why I didn't is because my power level is simply not taxing the stock airbox to the point where it would have been a restriction. As a matter of fact, um, I've proven that removing the filter didn't do any good for my car. In fact, <laughs> removing the filter on timestamp in really cold air uh, ended up, <laughs> my timestamp from 6130 was actually slower without that filter. Go figure. But Again, heavily modified car, this is the supporting mod that you want. If you've got a stock car, you definitely need to be spending your money somewhere else. Also, one other thing, uh, don't buy this thing if you're looking to have better throttle response. I did not notice better throttle response in my car, but again, the more heavily modified the car was, the more that this throttle body was going to help it. So, 
I hope that helps you out. Again, I know it's a little bit, I got a little bit into some numbers. I didn't want to drag y'all too into too deep a water with that. Just giving you guys the results. Want to let y'all know, look, I gave this thing every opportunity with my car, 11 passes over the course of three days to try to show some level of a re result. And I guess I did get a result as opposed to no result. Uh, but if you do have a more heavily modified car, this is definitely a good modification for you. And with that, that's a wrap. Hope y'all have a great one. Catch y'all on the next one. Adios.